up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odai J and we are locked in. This is day two of the six day recap of Supercell on Netflix. Now, episode two is called Taser and we're going to follow Taser around and try to see what his superpowers are and the things he does on a day to day to be able to help Mike out because he went to the future and he knows we have three months to try to save Dion. Now, before we jump into this and break down episode two, Taser, if you like this kind of content, superheroes, finding out superpowers and trying to save the day, then you're at the right spot because this series is good. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button and I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. So, hey, I appreciate each and every one of you. But let's go ahead and jump into it. This is episode two, six days, Supercell Recaps, Taser. We pick up right where we left off. Mike comes back to the future and he's right in front of Dion, and she's scared because she's looking like, what, you just disappeared? He's like, wait, I did? How much time has passed? She said it wasn't that long, but you did disappear in front of me, and now you're back. What's going on here? Well, for Mike, remember, he went into the future and seen his future self, and he knows that there's three months. So he takes a piece of paper, and he writes down these names. Andre, Rod, Sabrina. He writes all of them down, and he needs to go find out who these people are. Now, last time we seen Andre, he was knocking the damn ATM machine off the wall because he was upset. They didn't pay him, but now he comes home and AJ's like, Dad, you came home? He's out of breath because you wouldn't believe how much money he got. He has a couple peas, and I mean a couple thousand peas. When they say peas, that means pounds, their currency. So he starts taking all this money out. He has the door locked so AJ doesn't know, but it looks like we're back in business. Now, Rod, on the other hand, he just found out that he's faster than a speeding bullet, faster than lightning, and he's only out in Scotland. So you would think since he's this far away, it sucks. But for him, he's like, wait a minute. I actually have me some superpowers. And we know that he sells a lot of marijuana. So he sees somebody smoking and he's like, hey, let me hit that, mate. He takes a hit of that and he eases his mind. But now it's got him thinking, you know what? If I can figure out a way to harness this energy, man, I might just be ripping and running through the city. Sabrina knocked Kevin out with her powers. And remember, they get ready to run away because Char is like, we got to go. Whatever you did, Sabrina, you a bad person. But Sabrina's saying, I didn't, I didn't literally touch him. I just turned around and it happened. She's not knowing how to harness her power yet either. But she had the force. And she pushed Kevin and knocked him out. So he's on the ground. The police are coming. And it's time for them to go. Dion wants to call the police about Mike teleporting. He's like, no, 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 no. We can't do that. I talked to my future self. This is real. I know what I said happened doesn't sound believable, but it is. And his future self is saying, you need to go find the other people with those powers. Because you're the only one that's going to be able to save Dion. So knowing that he can teleport. He doesn't know how to harness it at the moment. And future self is telling Mike, you got to save Dion. That's his number one priority, even though she wants to call the police. Mike goes and talks to his best friend, the one that he told he was going to propose to Dion. Now, he's telling him everything. Hey, I can teleport. I know the day that Dion is going to die. So I have to try to figure this out. But of course, his homeboy he doesn't he doesn't believe this. I mean, you're listening to it, but would you believe if your friend told you they could teleport? So he's saying, why don't you just do it now then? But Mike can't do it. So now he's saying all that is is just some pre marriage jitters. That's all it is. You're just nervous about getting married. But Michael knows this is more than that. This is real. Now, Taser is out of the hospital. His grandma, she's seen this torn up shirt from when he got stabbed. But he goes and meets back up with his crew. Now, they're all outside, and they're watching Chucky on his Instagram live, and they're like, nah, we ain't going to put up with this. Taser wants revenge, and if you ain't down with Taser, then just go home. But Taser ain't letting Chucky get away with this. You're not about to keep saying you chef me up. So what they want to do is go over to their territory and have a conversation with Chucky and see if Chucky's going to keep that same energy or if Chucky don't want the smoke. When they get over there to their block, no one's outside. So they like, damn, they were just on the Instagram live. But then they see a random kid walk and they tell him to come over here. Now, this kid is begging and begging and saying, no, nah, I'm not part of the gang. I don't know none of them. I just live there. 
but they're bullying them, making them jump up and down and say, nah, we run this over here. We saw, we run it. Now they're looking and one of the young ones, he looks and says, that jacket looks familiar. Well, it turns out this kid was lying. He's actually part of the gang and this was a whole setup. So now Chucky and the crew, they start to chase him down and they are outnumbered. They end up chasing Taser down into a corner. And well, when his back's against the wall, he realizes there's no way out. You're just going to have to fight your way out of this. His eyes light up yellow and he goes invisible and he starts taking them out one by one. They swinging around. Everyone's running. They don't know where he's at. Taser's over here gutting people. And then Chucky tries to run and he catches him right in the neck. Well, Chucky ain't going to be doing too much talking. Then Taser comes back and his homeboy sees him. He's like, what the hell just happened? They hop on the back of the bicycle and they get low. Andre's taking his son AJ out shopping with all the money he got from the ATM. Now they having a grand old time. He gave his son a new iPhone. His son got all the new clothes. Well, when they stop and talk to the internet provider, he looks over and he sees his son AJ talking to some hoods. Now over in the UK, they used to call them road men. I don't know if they still call them road men or not, but basically thugs, you know what I'm saying, drug dealers. Andre sees his son over there and he goes to talk to him and says, hey, um, delete that number out your phone and don't hang around that crowd. They're going to lead you down the wrong path. Now, everyone's been telling their friends about what's going on. So Riot, the same thing. His best friend is Spud and they've been delivering dope and he's trying to convince them, hey, trust me. I got crazy speed, man. I just ended up in Scotland the other day. Spud's like, okay, well, won't you show me? So Rye gets ready to run. Everyone's looking at him, but he doesn't run fast at all. And Spud's like, you know what? I'm just going to go in here and grab me a job, man, because this selling weed, it ain't working for us. So now Rye, he's down and out. When Spud goes in there, he turns around in his car. It was about to get a traffic ticket, a parking ticket. Well, he lights his eyes up and he takes off. And when he comes back, he runs by the parking officer so fast, they don't even write the ticket. And you see him starting to laugh because he's starting to harness his skills. Michael's taking a shower. While he's taking a shower, you can hear on the radio, is talking about a game-related attack, somebody getting stabbed. And he's starting to think about when he went into the future and seen future Mike. Well, when he's in the future, he also sees future Taser. Now, remember, he ran into Taser and Taser's crew when he was delivering the packages. So it has him wondering, wait, is this guy one of the people that are on my list? And then he teleports out and he's in the living room and he's shaking and shivering. Dion has to put a towel on him. He's confused. Taze links back up with the crew because he has to make sure that they understand what I got. We can change up the whole game. We can go get Chucky, get them up out of here, and we can make moves. So now what they're thinking about is using his skills to be able to go invisible and start stealing from drug dealers and then putting the drugs on the streets. So they're all listening to it and they're like, all right, cool. But now they need to get some drugs. So they look over at the young one and like, hey, you still got that cousin that moves weight? It's like, yeah, well, we need you to call him because we need to, <laughs> we need to rob him. Mike goes back over to Taser's hood and he's trying to find out where he's at because he really needs to talk to him. He's seen him in the future. He knows that he's on the list of the people he needs to gather up, but he can't get close to him because Taser's crew is out here. And they like, you back? You ain't got no money? He's like, listen, I don't have any money. Well, I have 60 pounds. You can have that. But let me get Taser's number. Now, they're all looking out for Taser and saying no, but you give us your number and then we'll forward that message on. So he ends up giving the number to Tuzi, but Tuzi ain't responding to none of these messages. And he's telling them, yeah, I'm going to link you up with Taser, but he never does. But Mike, he's one step closer. Well, some of Chucky's crew, they show up. Mike was trying to get home and they corner him. They punch him. And now he's back against the wall. They're asking him, do you know Tuzi? Tuzi, do you know Taser? Do you know any of them? He's like, no, no, I don't know any of them, but they don't care. And they got a gun. And well, bang, they fire off a shot. Well, guess what? Mike is looking around 
and he realizes he teleported and came back, but the time is frozen. So not only can Mike teleport, he can travel through time and he can stop time. Now, he doesn't know how to control it quite yet. But this is why he has a bullet in his hand when he's back in his bedroom. Because he was here, he froze time, stopped the bullet, took the bullet, teleported back home. Mike has some nice powers. The plan is in motion. Taze and his crew, they're linking up with young boy's cousin, and he has one brick in the back seat. Now, the homeboys get in there, but they don't have any money because that's not the plan to actually buy a brick. It's really to steal. Well, they're sitting in here. They don't know what's going on. This is their first time having a brick. So he kicks them out of the, the Range Rover. They leave the door open. And guess what? Taser gets in. He takes the brick and he switches the brick out with a brick of flour. Mike gets back home and he's talking to Dion and he's telling her, listen, it's some crazy stuff going down. I really need to find these people because if not, in a certain amount of time, something bad is going to happen. So for her, she's not fully understanding it, just like we aren't. And he's saying, I don't have any control over this. It needs to happen this way. So she's saying, if we just go somewhere, get away for a little bit, maybe the time will pass and these powers, they will fade away. But Mike's like, it's not going to work. Not like that, because he went to the future and he knows what he's seen was real. Back over on Taze's block, everyone's out here celebrating. They just got them a freshly new brick. It's time to turn up. Everyone's over here smoking a little bit, drinking a little bit. Even Taze is smoking because now we up. Now, remember, young boy is the one whose cousin had that brick. So he's like, why didn't y'all tell me the full plan? Because they knew if they told him that they were going to rob him and switch it out, then he wouldn't do it because that's his cousin. But this party is disrupted real quick. And when we look over, we see a G-Wagon pull up, followed by another whip and another whip. And we're wondering, who the hell is this hopping out? It must have something to do with those drugs. Well, it turns out who pulled up is the guy they've been calling crazy. Remember, they always said Taser worked for crazy. He ain't crazy like crazy. Well, crazy's out of jail. Crazy got two guns. And crazy is acting crazy. All right, there you go. Episode two of Supercell. Let me know what you think about Taser. Is Taser moving a little reckless with his powers? Or do you think Taser's going to be able to finesse his way up out of this? Because, you know, at the end of the day, when you're on the block and you can disappear, you have an unfair advantage over everyone else in the neighborhood. But let me know what you think. This is day two of the six day breakdown recap of Supercell on Netflix. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.